Okay, this is a video for IT120, and I'm going to talk about the data samples for the co-op. A couple of first uh, preliminary points. One, uh, the purpose when you're looking at data like this is not to really criticize the structure of it. It's to look at it to make sure you understand it all. The point of building a database will be to um, create something that is more consistent and better than what they have now. Uh, I would not assume that these are database tables. They don't make good tables. They're just what they have in it, like a spreadsheet uh, or even an open spiral notebook. They, these are not uh, an example of what the database tables will be. So when you look at the data, you want to look at things and think about what questions you would ask. So here you have a list of members. Uh, one can assume, again, that this is only partial data it's just an example so we have all these different people one question i would ask is what does the date mean is that the date they joined is that the date that they last participated you know you need to understand what that date might mean uh email seems fairly self-explanatory uh, one of the questions might be whether the email is required or not does everyone have to have an email? Same with the phone. Uh, notice that Suhan doesn't have an address. And one could ask, is that necessary? Is it OK that they don't have an address? Or should she have an address? Um, that the fact that they're all in Seattle, for the most part, is fine. Uh, my postal codes are not accurate. I just invented them, just to let you know. So the questions that I would ask about this first table are, what, what does the date mean? Uh, is it the date they first joined? Is it the date they were last active? You know, what does it mean? Are emails and phones required? Both or just one of the two? And are addresses required? And if so, what do you do when there isn't an address like this? OK, so let's go. Some of you noticed that there's a lowercase letter here. That can be an issue. Um, you can fix that in a database structure. When we look at suppliers, we've only got like three here, and I wanted to give an example of the different kinds. So there's Jeff Cotton, who is a member as well. Um, again, the date you want to know is, what is that date? Is it the date they first became a supplier? Uh, you know, somebody should describe that date for you. Uh, email and phone and again you might notice that there's some uh, redundancy because there's an email and phone for Jeff Cotton up here as well as well as the address so all of this stuff is what they call redundant it's all repeated information in a good database there shouldn't be any repeated information but that's because it gives rise to chances for error but for this, it's OK. We just note it. It's something that we want to do away with later. Don Smith, who works for uh, Puget Farms, basically, uh, is a supplier. And again, we don't know what the date is. The thing here is that they have two addresses. There's a Puget at two Puget addresses. So question R, do you need both of those addresses? It is OK to have two addresses. It does add some complexity to the database structure. But uh, sometimes people do have two addresses, particularly businesses. Um, so then they have their address there. Susan Brown is also a uh, member. So Don Smith is the only one that doesn't seem to be a member. And one of the questions are, are all the suppliers members by necessity or are there several that are not? That's something to know. You know, are people members or not when they're suppliers? So that makes sense. Uh, so those are the questions that I would ask about that. For employees, uh, Again, so dates started here is a little clearer than just the dates up there. These are the dates they started as employees. Their email is repeated, which again, since uh, employees are all members, uh, it's repetitious. It, they've already got their email up there. Um, 
this gives a couple of different types of employees. There's a supervisor, an assistant, and a volunteer. And the question is, are there other kinds of employees? What are the kinds of employees? And what are the descriptions of those employees? All of that would be really useful uh, to know. So these are the purchases from suppliers. So these are purchases from Jeff Cottons. We're assuming these are all part of the same purchase. They broke those up into 20 pounds of red delicious apples, four pounds blackberries, price that is paid, the expiration date, uh, and the employee that took in the, um, the order, the, so the supplies. There are things to note here. Uh, there are, this conflates two different things, the item and the unit. So it would be useful to note the units, that they're in pounds, but some of them are just in uh, bags. Some are, um, you know, loaves like that. So there are different kinds of units. One of the questions would be, what kinds of units do you track? Uh, it also conflates the item, as I said, with the unit. So those in a database, those are going to have to be two different things. But... This, there's two pieces of information here, the, um, the unit and the item. And so one of the things to do is to get clear what those units are. You might talk about the prices um, and what that, uh, how they're priced, how they come up with their prices, um, the expiration dates, you know, um, you know, how they come up with them, what they do for that. And then um, can any employee take them in, you know, take pur purchase from suppliers? So there are lots of questions for that section. When we get down to purchases uh, by members, the idea is that only members can purchase. Uh, this is the date of the purchase, I presume, but you should ask that. This gives you a whole list of all the stuff that they uh, purchased. This gives you a presumed total. Somebody noted that there are some errors there. Uh, and this is the employee who took the process to purchase. And again, they're only the first name there. Uh, so there are lots of problems with this. Again, the point isn't to find problems per such. But this has the units and the item and the price all conflated into a single thing. And um, that needs those things will need to be separated. But when you're just looking at the data, it's mostly to just look at that, figure out how they came up with the price. Um, this is uh, two loaves, right, for George Lowe, and then the store credit, uh, which may be calculated wrong. I'm not sure Lynn did that. Sebastian, and again, the, the, the conflating of everything here, but what's purchased. So, uh, questions I would ask are just how you record this, where it's recorded, how you do the calculations. Um, there were a couple of people noticed misspellings and things. When you repeat things, they can respell, misspellings can happen. Final thing I'm going to look at is the inventory. We can ignore these numbers when we do it. We're going to get our own numbers. You might though ask what those numbers are. How do you come up with your product IDs? The supplier, the print, the quote marks mean that it's the same supplier. These are all from Puget. This is from Sue Brown. Uh, the supplier should refer it up here. We can make that a lot clearer in database, but right here, that's there. These are the date of the um, where it was added to inventory. This is the description. This is a little bit closer to what should have happened um, here. And it also has some reflection of what should happen in the purchase uh, there, but it's because it's broken up into the description, the units, and the price per unit and the quantity. The pull date is the date that they need to be pulled from the shelf. And what units waste should be, and you'd have to ask this, but it should be the number of units uh, that were not sold that had to be thrown away. Because you want to subtract those, keep track of those as much as you can. 
So the units for each of these, the price per unit, the quantity that they have of each, and the uh, date that they were that they have to be pulled, and then the um, units that were wasted. At this point, everything is waste because the dates are old, but we won't presume that's the case. So somebody's running a lawn item out there, which is a bit noisy. Hopefully you can hear me over that. Uh, that's my take on the data. And again, the point is to understand the data, not to be too prescriptive about it. We will create a database um, that will handle a lot of the problems, like repetition and misspellings and etc. At least make it a better handling of it. Okay, so that's my take on the data. Most of you did pretty well. Uh, just to say, I thought your first takes on the data were pretty good and showed some understanding of where we're going. Maybe not why we're looking at it now, but a good understanding of where we're going. All right, I will stop this and post.